It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Since the 2016 presidential election here in the United States, when Donald Trump so unexpectedly won, the Trump camp has been inundated with coverage of their connections to Russia, like that of the National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who was forced to resign. Jeff Sessions, who lied about meeting with Russian ambassadors and envoys, and Rex Tillerson, with extensive business dealings in Russia. And we have also covered here on The Real News, Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross's extensive businesses, business ties with the Russian capitalists. But flares surrounding Trump's actual financial connections to Russia seems to have died down a bit in terms of media coverage. But today, our guest, James S. Henry, has another revelation linking President Donald Trump to Russian oligarch Dmitry Rybolovlev, who may have saved Trump from financial ruin back in 2008. James Henry's article title, the oligarch files did a billionaire fertilizer baron bail out Trump by paying millions over the odds for this gaudy pleasure palace. And is this the Russian connection that could return to haunt the presidency? In his report, James Henry reveals that fascinating connection exists between Dmitry Rybolovlev and Donald Trump. James S. Henry, as you know, is a leading economist, attorney, and investigative journalist who has uh, done lead research on issues such as the price of offshore revisited. Thanks for joining us today, James. Good to be with you. So, James, let's start off with the estate uh, and this mansion uh, and uh, what the connection between this uh, Russian oligarch and Donald Trump is. Well, in 2008, as you remember, I mean, most people who uh, went through that period remember 2008 as the financial crisis when real estate prices uh, have been dropping in double digit figures over 2007. Uh, especially in places like Florida. Uh, and uh, mortgage companies, banks, were basically uh, contracting their loan exposures. So this is a period in which uh, everyone but this uh, Russian billionaire, <laughs> Ribolovlev, who was a potash czar, uh, was basically disinvesting in the U.S. Uh, market, especially in Florida. But along comes uh, Ribolovlev in June of 2008, and plunks down $95 million plus uh, probably a commission uh, for a property that Donald Trump had paid just $41 million for back in, 19, in 2004. And that was really convenient for Trump because it pre precisely at that time, all of his properties uh, projects were in trouble. And one in Chicago in particular uh, was, uh, uh, he was facing a $40 million personal uh, loan guarantee that he had made with Deutsche Bank, and he ended up suing Deutsche Bank, uh, uh, charging them with responsibility for the financial crisis and trying to get out of paying that loan in September of 2008. So this $40 million profit he makes on this Florida property is just uh, perfect timing from his standpoint. Uh, and it's really strange because at that time, uh, you know, everyone else with, was withdrawing. Subsequently, the property uh, continued to decline in value. Uh, the Palm Beach County appraised it at about $60 million in 2013. And Lovelef recently sold off uh, a third of the property at a pro rata uh, sale that's a substantial discount from what he paid for it back in uh, 2008. So it's, um, it's one of these curious deals, nothing illegal about it, let's make that clear. Uh, but Ribolovlev is also a partner of uh, uh, Wilbur Ross in the Bank of Cyprus. Uh, as of 2010, he had 10% of the bank and he still owns, uh, uh, we think, as much as 3.3% of it. And uh, he was also the guy who was basically bird dogging uh, Trump's uh, campaign jet all over the United States. Uh, multiple stops where his Airbus A319 crisscrossed with uh, Trump's campaign jet. Now, he denies having any contact with Trump, says he's never met Trump. Uh, he says that uh, the plane uh, trips were just coincidental. 
But, you know, the, these three kinds of facts are there staring us in the face. And we just hi highlighting here, I think, the need uh, for this accumulated uh, pile of unexplained uh, facts related to Russia's uh, connections with Trump. Uh, just the, the need for a real solid congressional investigation of this. James, why would uh, Raibo Love Love agree to pay above market price to bail out Trump or, or buy this mansion off of him? How does this kind of dealing work? Well, it's possible that he was just eager to divest uh, his investments in, in Russia and was willing to pay, overpay, in fact, uh, uh, in, in the U.S. market just to move money abroad. That's what, certainly one interpretation. But this is a fairly astute guy. I mean, he was worth, uh, according to Forbes, uh, up to eight billion dollars based on his very astute uh, investments and in the and uh, his, you know, uh, artful dealings in uh, the 1990s uh, in the uh, uh, fertilizer market. Uh, his company at one point controlled 30 percent of worldwide uh, fertilizer sales. So this isn't a fellow who ordinarily use, loses money on investments. Um, and uh, this is uh, kind of stands out in that in that regard. Uh, the, you know, recently we've also seen some other uh, revelations come to light about uh, Trump's other uh, uh, projects uh, uh, around the planet that benefited from Russian investors. One this week, we found out a, a great article in Fast Company magazine about his big Panama uh, Tower, four hundred million dollar property in Ta Panama that was developed around the same time. Um, from 2006 to 2011, uh, in which, uh, you know, basically Russian condo buyers came in and spent a whole lot of upfront money uh, to purchase condos. Now, why would Russian condo buyers want to uh, be buying condos in, uh, in Panama? Uh, it's a good question. His, one of his key supporters in that project, a fellow named uh, Martinelli, was the president of Panama. And uh, Martinelli is now... Uh, in Miami, Trump's going to have an interesting uh, decision to make about whether to extradite him back to Panama because former President Martinelli uh, has recently been uh, uh, indicted for having diverted $45 million from a school lunch fund in Panama, and the Panamanians want him back. And this was a revelation uh, from where? That article is Fast Company Magazine. It's just this week. And, uh, you know, it's an article that uh, you can Google online about the Panama uh, Ocean Club that Trump developed. And, and, with, and this had something to do with the Panama Papers that was released? Well, the Panama Papers uh, uh, highlighted the role of a Panamanian law firm, Mos Mossack Fonseca, uh, and uh, in setting up offshore companies and trusts for all kinds of cap capital flight uh, all over the planet. And in this case, in the case of the Trump uh, Ocean Club, apparently quite a few condo buyers, uh, including uh, quite a few Russians, took advantage of Moss Fan services uh, in buying their, uh, their condos in the name of offshore companies. Right. James, um, the, the link you make uh, between the uh, private planes of uh, Ry Rybo Lovelove and President Trump, uh, you are getting this information from, I guess, the uh, flight logs and so forth. Yet each party claims that they have never met each other. Now, is that possible? I have to take them at their word. I mean, I would love to see, uh, you know, I'd love to have an interview with River uh, uh to, to take his uh, assertions <laughs> apart. Uh, it's a little bit hard to account for the fact that the planes are landing in strange places like uh, Concord, uh, North Carolina, which is not ordinarily on anyone's uh, stop except for presidential candidates like Trump uh, and Charlotte and Miami and Las Vegas at uh, the and same And do we have dates. evidence that they were in the same city at the same time? They were in the same, they were definitely there. Uh, River Lovelace has said he was on the plane. He won't say what he was doing there. Uh, you know, was he meeting with the Trump organization? Was he carrying, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> caviar as presents for the, <laughs> the campaign? I mean, you know, was he just a Trump groupie? Uh, we're not sure. We really don't know. But I'm, I'm sure that this is the kind of thing that a segation could certainly get to the bottom of. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, it's just uh, an accumulating pile of indications that, uh, you know, there is more to this story than, uh, than meets the eye. Right. And then you've unraveled another interesting connection with the Deutsche Bank uh, and, the Ger- and the German bank with the world's largest, where Joseph Ackerman, who has been the only banker who agreed to loan money to Trump after his repeated bankruptcies. What is the entire connection here? Well, Ackerman's been appointed to be uh, president of the Bank of Cyprus, which is, uh, you know, what Wilbur Ross, the new Secretary of Commerce, took over. Uh, That's an odd choice, given the fact that uh, Ackerman's track record uh, during his uh, 10-year reign at Deutsche Bank, uh, you know, was not unblemished. I mean, this this bank during that period was uh, uh, found to be involved in all kinds of financial improprieties from uh, insider trading and uh, illegal trading, rigging energy markets, LIBOR markets, uh, you know, mortgage fraud, and most recently a, uh, a $650 million fine just in January for laundering $10 billion of Russian uh, dirty money. And, you know, it was using uh, banks in Moscow, the New York, and Cyprus to do that. So Ackerman had a, we know, had a very strong relationship with President Putin. Uh, he also uh, was involved in this bank, and he was Donald Trump's one remaining global bank creditor. Uh, to this day, uh, Trump uh, still owes Deutsche Bank at least three hundred million dollars. So, you know, that's more than half of uh, his uh, corporate loans outstanding at the at this point. So, it is an unusual relationship. In the House situation, uh, he actually sued Deutsche Bank, his one creditor, uh, in in two thousand eight. And the fact that he thought that he could get away with suing uh, Deutsche Bank, even though, uh, you know, in order to delay this loan uh, repayment is, is an indication that he had some fairly strong relationships at the top of that bank. Right. James, finally, uh, returning to the heart of the problem here, Trump said that there was nothing wrong with doing business relations or having good relations with Russia. But uh, all of these are really compromising. And the real issue here is how vulnerable he is to blackmail, given this kind of history and shenanigans. Um, You write in your report that uh, it's not just the alleged sex tapes and but the financial favors make up Trump. Uh, make Trump uh, indebted in some way to people like Dimitri, uh, Ribo, Love, Love. Um, explain this a bit more and how can this, co- if there is a debt of this sort, how can it be collected? I don't think it's a simple kind of conspiracy where Trump owes these people favors. I, I think that it's more a question of the kind of milieu that he was willing to be associated with. I mean, over and over again, you find, you know, people running uh uh, gambling rings out of Trump Towers. You see the Bogolevich uh, gang kind of uh, involved in business deals with Donald Trump. Uh, it's really a question of, you know, uh, as uh, Cervantes says uh, somewhere, uh, you know, you are who you walk with. And that's the issue here. That's that's the issue that we have uh, here, I think is most uh, salient here. I mean, is Trump going to change his ways and associate with new kinds of people? Ordinarily, we would take a look at the kind of uh, uh, business associates that one develops as an indication of their behavior and uh, their propensities to do uh, uh, good uh, uh, work. But we've seen recently the uh, dismissal outright by his administration of uh, all of the U.S. attorneys in in the United States, including one of the most outstanding attorneys in New York City. and, uh, you know, that I think is consistent with this pattern of turning a blind eye uh, to uh, organized crime. All right. James, I thank you so much for joining us today. And I look forward to your further revelations. Great. Good to be with you. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.